Hello and good evening. My name is Kelly Hain, and I'm the general manager here at the Modern Honolulu. Tonight, we have um, truly the best surf photographer in the world, Zach Noel. My kids surf. My daughter right now is in Costa Rica, making her way to Nicaragua. She wants to start a surf school in Nicaragua eventually. And she's just like one of your biggest fans, Zach. Thank you for Thank being you very here. Much. I am so excited. Now, I'm also going to call up um, some of our other surfers, and then, then you take it over from there. Wonderful. Okay, we have Nathan Florence, who from the North Shore. He's from You're a skater also. I mean, you love all sorts of sports. Yeah, I uh, grew up surfing, skating on the North Shore. So, yeah, Amazing. Awesome. awesome. So great to have you here. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Mark Healy, professional longboard <laughs> Fisherman, free diver, and um, can't yeah. wait to hear some of the stories tonight. Okay, we also have Jamie O'Brien. young breed of big wave riders. I mean, that's like, oh, that's such a big title. That's awesome. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Cool. And then Eli, come on up. Eli Olson. It says you've been surfing for 20 years, which means right out of the mother's womb. Because <laughs> I got to tell you, you look like you're 20. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, my dad had me surfing before I could swim. That's so awesome. So, tonight I turn it over to Zach to lead us through an extraordinary evening. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much, first off, to The Modern, um, Kelly, Gristle, um, for having us and being able to host this amazing night um, to bring us all together to share some of these stories that we have of you know, our past trips, uh, the winter season on the North Shore. Um, we're going to take questions um, at the end, and you'll all get a chance to ask them or make fun of them or us or whoever. So it's going to be a very fun evening. Um, I put together a little slideshow with some new images not before seen, um, as well as some of the videos of the guys. And we're going to go into each of the surfers, highlighting some of the photos I've taken of them that are my favorites. And we're going to tell some backstories to them, as well as some videos. So I hope you guys enjoy this evening, and thanks again to The Modern. Appreciate it. This is some of the new imagery. This was actually shot with a helicopter. This is on the North Shore, uh, clear water, believe it or not. And this is outside of Lania Kea. And um, from a very high helicopter. It was a very strange winter season, I think, as all the guys can um, agree. The previous year was insane for El Nino of the swells that we came through, the eddy ran. Um, Jamie and Mark were in the eddy, I believe, and it was an insane year. So this year was a very different. It wasn't quite as big or as consistent of swells, but when they did come, they're quite amazing, I think. You know, the handful of ones that we did get were incredible. Um, you guys can grab the mic at any point and jump in if you guys have a comment. Eli. Don't feel scared. <laughs> Eli. Uh, is, is this the same day I, you randomly sent me a photo of, of me and a help? For, you took the photo and I was at Makaha and then you sent me a photo like 10 minutes later. Yeah. Yo, I just saw you from a helicopter and I was like, I didn't see <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were going around the island shooting a Red Bull piece and I see these crazy guys on a sub squatch out at Makaha. And I was like, who would be out here on a sub squatch? It's big, the sun's going down, and we get a little closer. I have the long lens I look at, I'm like, of course it's Jamie on the back of that thing. Which we'll get into like his crazy, like I got so much fun videos and photos of Jamie throughout the times of his antics. And so, yeah, this was the same day. The creepy thing is I didn't even see him. Yeah, <laughs> very quiet. And it was a full-size helicopter, so that's even more amazing. But. Um, this is just one of my images, just kind of to introduce myself on this, uh, one of my favorite ones. This is out at Chopo, this is Koa Smith, and just one of my favorite views of kind of what I do and where I do it. Um, show you just a couple. Here's another one of Tahiti that has been very popular with my imagery um, that I've done. This is a friend of mine, Christian, and was just that perfect afternoon as that sun setting with friends um, out in the water. I think I was on that trip. You were on that trip. Jamie was. I've traveled with Jamie a lot to Tahiti, um, Mexico, more times than I can count. We actually one time decided that it was going to be like a great idea 
to get um, the jet ski in LA, buy a used car, which he then put sounds in. We had to like wait an extra day to be able to put sounds and rims. And we then drove down at 2 a.m. to go down across the border. And we went through Nogales, I believe. It was like a 38 hour drive. Yeah, and <laughs> we were just, just going. I mean, we covered up the skis. It was a bright Red Bull ski, so it was not something you want to have as a target. And we drove down through um, Nogales right as the sun came up, because you don't want to be driving in the evening like when it's dark. And we crossed the border and we drive all day. And we pulled in at a place and stayed the night. We're like, we're going to be up early. We're going to leave. We got a whole nother like 18 hours of driving. We got to do it, start crack of dawn if we want to not be in the dark driving. And I think we like slept in two extra hours or something. And we then had to find a spare tire we didn't have for the trailer. And we ended up going and driving and we come up upon all these guys in like black ski masks with machine guns, a lot of them. And we were just like bullets all in the cars on the side there. And these guys, all they were the like federales, like- Don't drive to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> we drive to Mexico. It's like, bodies, like everything. Luckily we left the ski in the car there. So we had the freedom to come back and forth. But I think we went like eight times that summer that was to go shoot um, Who's J.O.B., right? Yeah. So that was a fun one, just back and forth, back and forth. We just had the setup there, it was just that initial time. We just drove one. Yeah, <laughs> car's still there. I, I wanted to bring the car back. I was like, Dad, I think I did. You, you drive there. I, I, I'm not your dad anymore. I was like, right, I'm not, I'm not Luna. Drive the car back. That was long hours, so that was a really... It's, it's, it still works and it's still there. Yeah, it does the job, right? All four runners. Oh, no. Um, this is some of the imagery from this winter. This is out on the North Shore. Um, it's kind of more like the off the wall area as I was kind of swimming in on a wave. Um, beautiful blues and the perspective kind of gives you like you're kind of there paddling in the water with me. Um, this is a newer shot. This is McCalla Jones out at off the wall and shooting with like a different type of lens. This is like a medium focal lens, uh, 16 to 35 millimeter. It's not quite a fisheye but it's something that gives it the perspective of being a wide barrel on the wave and getting it. So this is actually gonna be used in a new reef campaign of Mikala. And it's, this is the, how it was lit. It was just that perfect morning light, beautiful and clean. I think all you boys always are out at Off The Wall. Everyone knows it kind of as like a, it's kind of like a photo studio. You know, if you really gotta go get that shot, it's, it's closeouts a lot of the times. But every once in a while you'll make it, but it's that beautiful barrel there, you know? I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not Mark. Mark. Mark has a goofy foot, uh, but he'll still go. I've seen Mark. I don't think Mark owns a board under the size of nine foot two. Uh, as a big board. <laughs> I'm done with clothes. <laughs> um, this is Nick Von Rupp. It's just a beautiful moment uh, in last year. Pick perfect. You were just going out the same time. I saw. I saw that photo. I'm like, I wish it was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like jealous. Yeah. Uh, what, about, what else have been doing there? Those moments. Um, Koa, who couldn't be with us. Koa Rothman. He's didn't make What's it. What's he today. doing? Why couldn't he be with us? <laughs> he was with his girlfriend. I believe. Mean, was it was it Coachella or was yeah. it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Hopefully he's watching on the live feed yeah. right now. Koa. <laughs> I'm calling you out on the live feed, Koa. Um, John Lawrence, and this is just a great moment as kind of I'm going underwater there. Um, this is with a 16 to 35 lens again. Kind of one of my favorite lens of choices as this water is kind of going up, you get these crazy light streaks and moments um, in that one frame. Um, Ulu, Ulu boy, another great one. Beautiful blue waters. and. You know, that's why everyone comes here to the North Shore. The North Shore is still the Mecca of surf where everyone comes to it. Luckily, we all reside, you know, and we're very lucky to have that as a backyard. And all you boys grew up straight there on the beach on the North Shore, right? I mean, it's an amazing place. I, I think the coolest thing is, is like a paddle out there and I see all my friends and like, it's like whether, you know, like every time I paddle out, I see Eli or I see Nathan or I see Mark or I see John or I see one of them. I see Zach or I see Brent, like we're just like, it's just like a big family and like to me that's the coolest thing because like my dad said like when he came here, when he moved to Hawaii in the 70s, he's like, man, like 
I would have never dreamed of getting the waves you guys catch these days. Like that was out of the question. Like you know, like to see some Holly kids, like you guys get these waves you guys get. You know, like that was remember that the first time we ever served fight. It was yep. like you, Fuller, Federico, and me that morning that we camped, or the night that we camped on the beach That's to go cool. out and be the first people up. You're still scared. We we're For like sure. a bunch of little cockroaches that were scattered. We're like, if we could get out before anybody else, maybe we could try a way. Might have a chance. Yeah. But it's, it's really cool. Like out there, like Pipeline's like a community. You think like, oh yeah, they're out there so serious. They're doing their thing. But like, I'm having a full blown conversation with this guy and this guy and that guy. And then I'll talk to Zach for a little but bit. you're always keeping an eye on the horizon, right? Uh -huh. Jamie will so do that. I'm Throw guys off. And I'm not around them. <laughs> I mean, you, Eli, you and Nate haven't been like, I mean, we're like, been out at Pipe that, that long. I mean, you grew up around it, but really like come into it in the past five, six yeah. years or less, we're right? We're kind of part of a newer generation, grew up watching these two at Pipe, and kind of like learning from them. Yeah, we're, we're definitely lucky to be like the, not that big of a generation difference, but like just the next generation underneath, and these guys help pave the way, and it's kind of cool, like Jamie was saying, we're all friends and we feel like a family, and like, we all look out for each other too. It's not just like battling for waves. Like if Jamie goes on another wave or and he falls, we're gonna be watching the entire time. We'll turn it well, back yeah. on the ocean until his head pops up and then we're like, okay, he's out for, for, for everyone. And you're one of the best photographers in the world and I feel good for two reasons because if I get a good one, Zach's gonna nail the shot. And if I'm underwater, Zach's one of the best swimmers in the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be the first guy to pull my unconscious body out of the water so I mean that's such a thing like seriously like we are the first line you know you can have the best the North Shore lifeguards are the best but if they're on the ski or they're in the tower those are crucial minutes that they're not there we're constantly watching each other if one of my friends has a bad wipeout I'm watching and making sure that he comes out did he come up did he come up you know you're checking and you're like asking them like are you okay you know and um, it's everyone's kind of got each other's back in that sense and you know, can swallow their pride and make sure and, you know, ask for help when they need it. So it's a really great, like, uh, family, like, brotherhood in that sense that everyone kind of is around and can do that. So, yeah. Well, this is a fun one. This happens at Pipeline every once in a while. I think that's Whoa. Brett Barley in the back, and that's not his lower half in the foreground. <laughs> so, that is uh, not a good situation. It's a pretty thick wave. But it does happen, you know, and that kind of brings me to like the pecking order. You'll see Jamie O'Brien on every other wave out there sometimes. Um, and it's like, okay, wasn't he just on the wave before and got spit out and now he's on? And so how, how does that happen, Jamie? What is your positioning secret? The biggest snake in the lineup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you start calling your uncle, so you're like, I'm going to try it out. Yeah, you're well, trained you train well by Davey Miller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I think when you pile out the pipe, sometimes Eli's not there, Mark's not there, and it's not there. And then, you know, then we start doing. We're business. there. You it's a matter of perception. <laughs> I mean, what do you? Where do you guys feel like with your like? Because it is a pecking order. You couldn't someone run couldn't just um, paddle out there, and you know what I mean. Like if they're in the right spot or the right thing. But how do you feel like you position yourself? in that lineup, like anyone can. That's a it. tough one. It's a tough one. Because everyone wants to be humble, you know, but of everyone course. wants to be aggressive and get their own waves and get their work done. But like, there's a fine line of being like aggressive and being just a complete dickhead. Sure. And uh, so everyone's trying to get their work done and all these people from the entire world are coming to this tiny lineup yeah. that we've waited all summer for to start breaking. And like, so it's a, it's a really tight crowd. It's really one sweet spot, right, Jamie oh. and guys? Like, it's yeah. like, if you, if you really want to get that wave of your life, you got 150 people out there at one given time, and there's that like pretty much that sweet spot of being too deep, too shallow. That's it's what really do you think? funny because like I'll be sitting here, and then Nate will be sitting right there, and then Mark will be sitting right over there, and I'm like, I already know what these guys it's are the up same. to. Right? <laughs> you know, like, wow, this wave's gonna come. They're gonna think they already got it. And you're like, you know, like you kind of you go out there and you play all these mind tricks on each other, and like what, whatever, you know, like you know. I just sometimes you just gotta. But it can be very dangerous way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very, like it's a very shallow. You, I could be here and you could be there, and you're not in the spot, and I'm in the sweet spot. Yeah. And it's easy. It goes from like 
heaven and hell real quick. <laughs> I, I think that because it's it's way friendlier than it used to be, like for most of my life surfing there, like at the beginning you're like you feel like the you know the, that bait ball footage of like Blue Planet, the sardines just getting destroyed. <laughs> I feel like the last sardine, like, oh god, it's coming soon. Like when I was a kid and we were kids. That's how I felt being out there. Um, and then it, you know, it, it progressed on, you earned your stripes, and it was a lot more rough around the edges for a long time. Um, but I feel like the place that it's at right now, it's it's a, in a really great place. Yeah. A lot of people have each other's backs as far as safety. There's a lot more of a family environment, I would say, out there. And I don't think that should change. But it's kind of like weird. It's like there's no, you know, when it's somebody like, hasn't caught a wave in two fucking hours and then your buddy puts his head down like, Thank you. I, I think I think there's like a, I I just think like um, I'm sorry. I, I want to know like so like you think there's like a, a thing going on at the lineup between us like I hear like Brent grumbling about like, <laughs> yeah oh, oh, stop like oh, just oh, just just stop like, bring his knee back and and well, well, that's that's an even smaller See, because, because the photographers in, yeah the photographers are artists they have emotions and shit like, and they, it's like fucking like cheerleader squad like no one was in front of me with his white helmet again I would tell him something if I had the balls. <laughs> There's a very pecking order for photographers. Oh, there's a pecking order for photographers as well when you go out there, and that goes back to like being in position, and you really can't sit even right next to each other. You have to like line up down the way, and that little sweet spot is so small, um, especially if you're shooting with different lenses. And it took me a very long time of going out there to kind of move my way up, just as probably surfing wise too. You know, you can't just jump but out there. Scott, and I can give you a hard time when you first came yeah. out. <laughs> I remember when Noel showed up on the scene. <laughs> he started nailing covers like within like a year or something of, of Water Magazine. And we're like, oh, who is this guy? Some Asian kid from town. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Yes. laughs> so, so wait, one more question, Zach. Yes. Who, who, who's the top dog? <laughs> uh, you four or oh, just in no, general? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, the photographers. We're here, we're here for you. We want to know. Oh, well, you know, I think it... Uh... Have you guys just pulled it down and measured or what? How's it going? Uh, you know, I think we all kind of have a good rotation if you're out there first. Uh, Kiyoki, Brent, myself, like, it really... Uh, kind of rotates in there, I feel, because if we are very respectful, or if like Brent's like, I need the shot of Jamie, and it's, you're coming down the line, we're kind of swapping out and doing that. So it's a, uh, those are a lot of my really good friends. And if they needed something, or they, if I can't do something, or a job, or anything like that, we're helping each other. You know what I mean? Like the community and world is too small to like have those enemies, and we kind of help each other grow in that sense. They're my good friends that I'm always looking out for. Yes, it's competition in the water, but it's best shot win, so it's hopefully. <laughs> hopefully you won. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is Evan Valier here, and this is a shout out down at Pike. He's kind of going straight here, but you got all these guys in the lip kind of going up. That can sometimes even ruin your pathway of going. There are so many people out there. Like they said, you know, they're sitting close. That's where the peak is. There's other guys sitting all the way inside along the way, and a lot of guys get in your way. Like when they go, you got bodyboards, you got surfers, you got body surfers, photographers, kind of in the way. So it's kind of an obstacle course sometimes when you're out there. Mikey, one is that pipeline, but it looks like it's Chopo, just such a thick. <laughs> that Mikey Bruno? Yeah. He's a lifeguard at pipeline, and he'll pile off the line up and be like, dude, I've been working all day watching you guys. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm I'm sorry, you go that yeah. pal around you. Like, <laughs> And, and it'll be like he'll tell you the whole go trip and then you'll like come home and you're like flipping through Instagram like nine o'clock you're like oh Mikey's five waves and you're like what? what? <laughs> I'm never gonna give him another wave ever again. <laughs> he's, not, he's not good looking like yeah, that. Yeah, like, he's, he's a great guy. There's a lot of professional surfers that are lifeguards as well and they 
go out there on their breaks or after work and get amazing waves like this. So sell you, sell you the dream that they've been working all day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, this is who is Brett Barley. Brett Barley. It's another like great moment at Pipeline. There um, really shows how wide and big the wave is. Is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. So it kind of does give us. I think Brett Barley is like a perfect example of like an East like an East Coast guy that just comes here and he's super nice and super respectful. Been coming for years and like just shows up and does his thing. Sits a little deeper in its own space and doesn't bother nobody. Puts in their time and they can get their way. And he ends up with amazing. photos like this. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Cool. He's out there. He's out there all the time. It is yeah, putting in his time on that. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And that's what I'd always tell like friends that would make excuses all the time that are pros that come out. I'm like, look at Hippo. Look yeah. at Todd Morgan. Look at guys that like. If you want it and it's something that you really like, genuinely like, and you're not forcing it, you'll get those waves. So they're scary, but you'll get them. <laughs> yeah, they're there. It's Bruce. Mm -hmm. This wow. past winter, floater. just a big floater. No. <laughs> well, uh, did he, he saw something he didn't like in that moment, so it was something he didn't want to go through on. Um, Danny Fuller, cool little moment, kind of with this with a 50 millimeter lens, so it kind of gives you a different perspective on things. Um, not quite a fish. I've just been trying to shoot it a little bit closer and in the barrel with the 50, and it's given me like a result I really like of showing. The lip and the wave a little bit more um, than the standard fisheye. I feel there's so much of that out there going around and everything. So how can I make something different from something seen so many times? Um, that's what I'm trying to do with my images, you know, to make it stand apart. Danny, Danny grew up with Mark and I, and about 20 some years ago. That was when we all first dom patrol pipe. Like we're all nuts. Like wow, we're a couple early. early. <laughs> but it's cool to still see like Danny and all. But the you guys were the out. youngest guy in the group. Then it was me, Danny, you, and Federico. Yeah. So you were like a year and a half, two years younger. Than we were supposed to be surfing a contest at like Aokai Beach Park, but we had like bigger and better ideas and doing something more dangerous. <laughs> and you broke your board. Yeah. I was like, fuck, I'm kind of jealous. Mark, Even though I was like, dude, that's kind of gnarly. <laughs> No, no, then Mark broke his board and he broke it in three pieces and had Wilbur Kukemeyer on his board. I'm like, yeah. oh, Mark's super gnarly. <laughs> when you break a board, you're oh, gnarly. For some yeah. reason, when you're young, when you break a board, you feel like you're charging. Yeah. <laughs> funny, funny story, the first board I ever broke in my life, Nate's mom burned me on a weekend. <laughs> so she dropped in on me. I went straight, straight, me up there for I went straight <laughs> Pearl broke my board and I just walked up and down the beach with two pieces. <laughs> I mean, you guys come also as like, a, I feel like Keely with your generation and Jamie was the first time it was like acceptable for free surfers more in a sense, where you guys could do the photo guy or the trips like that in that sense more than just having to do contests. You know, it wasn't a requirement of like this, and they really paved the way, like even though you guys were right behind, it's not a requirement for guys to have to be competing on the WSL. I mean, it's still a prestigious competition and league, but you can also make the, the career of being a photo or video and different things like that. I mean, is that? 100%, right? these guys were like some of the first guys to do it. And um, I know when I was really young, after about 10,000 first round losses in NSSA, I was like, I'm pretty <laughs> over contest. And like, these guys were doing trips around the world, just getting super barreled. They always look like they're having so much fun, no pressure, not surfing waves this big and windy, and like they're just having a good time. And I was like, they're making a career and doing what they love, and there's no pressure, and they're just it just looks so fun. So I was like, I know I personally was like looking up to them, being like, I want to do that. Yeah. And it was like a it was a really hard thing to do. So for you guys to break through and do that, that was like a huge deal. In I, I just remember, I remember specifically one day. So I was the last person to ever get a sponsor. <laughs> I remember, I was like, you get free wax from Sunset Beach Surf Shop. There, it's giving you free Florida sex wax. God damn it! You know? <laughs> Not that I was, but I always, I was like, okay, you know, I took school seriously. I was like, I'm gonna be a marine biologist. That's my thing. Um, and then, like, actually, Liam gave me my first kind of like shot, and some stickers and some. A bunch of crap that didn't fit me, and, uh, <laughs> and then I ended up going on a trip to Fiji 
with with a sponsor at 15. So I'm like, trap. All of a sudden, I'm traveling with EG solo. Like, actually, they wouldn't let me in the country at customs, and there was some guy behind me who's a surfer, apparently not a pedophile. He was just cool. <laughs> he was just like, yeah. They're giving me a hard time. He's like, I'm his uncle. And then I was supposed to leave when everyone else did, and I begged to stay and told my parents I was staying another two weeks and Jeez. worked and ended up with Mohawk. And, but anyways, <laughs> college was pretty much out after that. So um, yeah, just to, to see a, a career path or a lifestyle path out of the whole thing was kind of a shock to me as well. Yeah. Its name. This was a heavy one this past winter, early. Really? 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 Yeah. Um, just a really heavy, meaty one. This one, I think the day wasn't rideable until like 11 or 12, and then you get the few gems, but it's still really heavy and like crazy ones. Um, best time to go out and shoot. Zach's like, come on, let's go. And you're like, nah, I'll wait till it gets good. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of, this is one of the most perfect waves I've seen. During the shootout. During the shootout. It doesn't look like pipeline. And I shot it really pulled back, and this white water flying off here and everything is, that was an insane wave. That was an insane contest that the Hui backdoor shootout was incredible. Did, were you guys all in it? Yep. No, no sorry, Mark. <laughs> sorry to bring that up. Sorry, Mark. All right. <laughs> See, there's a big one out at backdoor. Um, just fun moments. It's, it's really great that I can like, these guys I work with, but they've also become my friends and they've become someone we get to travel with and we have great times because you're not in the water all the time on these trips. You're in the water, you know, a couple hours or it could be all day if it's good, but you got all that time and all that travel time. So it's important you kind of get along with each other and can agree and not kill each other by like four days on a boat. Um, but it's something that like, the relationship between surfer and photographer is a very important one because we both work with each other in a sense using each other in that because they need the exposure and the photos we need the content to provide to the sponsors and the magazines so it's a relationship that we've both been able to build with each other and it's great that it's friends to be able to do that with so there's Kaivi. this was a big one this past winter and um He's a lifeguard too, no sponsors, and just went for it on this wave. Um, he didn't make it, he definitely was trying. That is a big wave though. And he is holding on to that thing. All he can, the video is insane. It's not pretty, but you know he went for it and just, he grew up on the North Shore too, and they, guys will go. Um, another shot, this is pipeline on like a little small flat day. And, just beautiful how the reef is. We're so lucky to be able to have this uh, where we go swimming, surfing, and make our careers. Um, another one, this is why Maya Bay after a big cleanup set kind of came through and caught some guys. Um, and we got Mark Healy. So this is Mr. Mark Healy. I'm gonna go through and kind of talk about some of my favorite photos and with the guys of, of what they have and um, where I've been. This is actually in Fiji with Mark. And um, Mark is, an insane diver. I don't even know how deep Mark can go. Mark, how deep can you dive? Does it matter? Do I have to come back up? <laughs> I can dive really deep. I don't have to come back up. That's just true. Mark is a world class free diver. Uh, this was in Fiji. It was just such a great moment there. And, um, Mark is insane. So here's a little video of Mark, and it's uh, it's just pieced together. So just. Enjoy. Mark will kind of explain some moments from it, maybe while it's going on. Um, here we go. Well, this is like last week. <laughs> Where were you? So you're, you're in, I was in Panama, drifting on a bank, and a very tall. that doesn't look like a very big fish right there, but it, it's actually pretty damn big. And the water's not as clear as Hawaii, but you're kind of like drifting over this underwater seamount. You can see my buoy that this thing How deep is that? Um, so the top of the seamount at the its shallowest spot is 140 feet. Not that you're diving down there. There's like a thermocline of like really dark, cold water. So on the surface, like I actually got like cord my heat stroke fighting this fish over an hour and a half in the water because it's so hot. But you dive down to 150 sorry. feet, or, or sorry, 50 feet, and it gets really cold. Yeah. And those buoys were holding it up on you. How, how many of those did you have to use them? Yeah, two. 
one could disappear and you never see it again. Where are we here? This is just at Tavaroa. You're sitting Last really year. far out from everyone else. <laughs> yeah, I just trying to... <laughs> is it, that looks like the peak down there. It's, it's a typical tactic that you do, you, that you learn as a Tavaroa boatman, is when everyone, the crowd's there, you go up to the top and you make the whole crowd chase you. Because it's like this <laughs> system of everyone trying to get deeper, and then you catch a wave down and surf the best part again. So this but is that the same one. Yeah, that's the fish that I shot. How's that wave? That one went 223. Double. Is that one of your biggest ones, Mark? <laughs> yeah, that's my biggest wow. tuna. So I cut. I we, we ate it and had a great time on the island. And, but I, I took the tail. And I put it in the freezer, and it, you know the tail doesn't have that much meat, so it's gonna thaw quick. And I had four flights to get home. <laughs> and I, I, like I, I just like got signed on with Lululemon. I went straight from Canada and meeting all of them. And they gave me all this like nice Lululemon clothes, right? So I packed this this Aki tail in my bag. <laughs> I was like, as if it was a cooler. And I was just like. <laughs> Like if my bag would have got lost, like <laughs> it would have exploded from expanding a rock like a dog on the side of the road that got hit. Yeah, <laughs> that was a two, west side. That was a two-hour fight, you said, or hour? Yeah, we got, I get, it dragged me two miles. Jeez. So just holding onto that buoy that you saw for for two miles, and then just trying to get it up and, and get it into the boat. And yeah, it's a great time. That's, that's intense, Mark. Um, images of Mark, deep, I'd want to say from this past winter, but you can do it for Mark will go. Another one of my favorite ones of Mark. This is again with that 50 mil, or 1635. Um, last year, maybe? Possibly. Possibly. Lost in the major. Tavarua, just a clean one. That is a small board to just prove that he does have small boards. <laughs> now Mark, what is going through your mind? Mark here is right here with the yellow board. Cool. Um, this was at the Eddy. And what, what are you thinking at this moment, Mark? Uh, I, got, I made the mistake of having like a dinner party and having our friends over and they brought this from the set of Hawaii Five O, my friend who shall remain nameless brought this like crazy bird flu and got us so damn sick. So I was dropped on a couch like half dead. They didn't move for two weeks and then the Eddie was called on. And I was just so bummed that I felt like such a pile. And and I was was kind of upset. This is the second heat in the afternoon and I wasn't really happy with the way I was surfing, so I figured I had to like take a little more chances. <laughs> <laughs> Down the face. That's Jesus. what it kind of is, though. You kinda, yeah, that's that. Uh, it looks like it's right sloped here. there and then goes a little steeper right there. Maybe it's a double up, you know? Hey, <laughs> I just, I, I work the numbers game. You know? <laughs> try as many times. Sometimes yeah. it'll work. We want to know what's going on. <laughs> Mark, before the Eddie, I got, I was very lucky. I got to shoot the Eddie for a second time and I was in the water and Mark's like, I'm going to go left. And I'm like, it's a right. <laughs> what do you mean you're going to go left? And he's insistent and then. He's out of his mind though, but <laughs> when when a set comes at Waimea, like I just make sure I'm like like five or ten feet more out in the mark. Like, cause I, like he's, he's always talking about like hold your line, hold your line. Like that's Mark still. That's and what I'm you like, gotta do. No, no, work. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I learned, but like I, I learned to be like maybe ten more feet out there. I, I don't know why. I was like, well, if I'm ten more. Well, you feet got out, longer arms too. You paddle like crazy. <laughs> I got alligator arms. Here's what a mark going. No, he got his feet under him, and that's a big one. I want to give the perspective of like the other surfers kind of going back out, and you make it makes you feel like you're right there in the water with him in this moment. I mean, that was an insane day of waves. I don't think they have ever seen such flawless in that. And you guys came outside, right, Nate and Eli? Yeah, I can't wait to see these outside. guys on the Eli. Right. I mean, they're the <laughs> next. Jen on that of like coming in to for the Eddie and it's just insane. It's not that they won't be going on those waves. It's just you know as everything kind of turns over and moves, they'll get that invitation into the Eddie um, to be a part of it. It's just really putting in their time on the other waves and the outer reefs and the different things. I mean, it. Jamie and Mark are both invitees to the Eddie and didn't come easy. You know, it didn't just 
be handed to you. It's something earned that's very prestigious. It's you drop everything for the Eddie, right? I mean, that's a, yeah, yeah. No, I think the, it, the craziest part for me is like living living by the beach, man. Like when the waves come up, you I don't know, maybe even Blue Bouquet, you can hear the waves just rumbling, rumbling, and you can't sleep all night. You like wake up, and you're like you're like you kind of like looking at the waves, and you're like. Oh, the bushes are gone in front of the house. Like, oh, you know, like you're like, oh, I gotta go back to bed. Get go back to bed. I wake up an hour later. Like, you're like, oh my god, a wave just washed under the house. Oh, you know, you're like, you're like, how wave hasn't yeah, washed under the house for ten years? Like, so yeah. you know, they're like, the eddy's on, it's on tomorrow. Like, and you're just like, plus all the hype from everyone talking about oh, this. Well, and it's for weeks. Everyone's got their theories, and there's yeah. just thousands of theories, and that's when anxiety kicks in. You're oh, just like cool. trying to sleep, and you can hear the waves. And it's like it's tough. Last last year I woke up and I was like I was like they're like, Oh look, if we wake up tomorrow and the eddy's too big then like you know, we might do like uh like watercraft assistance or something and I'm like thinking like fuck I thought if it was too big, it was too big. Now like, oh, there's a way like you know, like oh great, like you know, I show up and people are like, Yeah, Jimmy, charge You're like oh, I hope I don't die today. <laughs> It's scary, like, and don't get me wrong. Yeah. But when you, when you like, at the end of the day, you're like having a beer and you're sitting there with your friends, you really appreciate life. Oh, you're yeah, like, you're, like, you're, you're on the top of the world. Yeah. You're just like, holy shit, I just survived that shit. <laughs> yeah. And then two, two days later, you're like, fuck, I should have done better. Yeah. It's <laughs> all good today, and then you're like, gosh. But, yeah, that's a moment right there. What is, what's this maneuver, Mark? <laughs> I've been that one too. Oh. That's what Mark says 10 feet deeper. That looks like he's breathing right there, on you? Know? I'm ghosting right there. <laughs> Probably it's, the it's, I bring art to serve. <laughs> you do. <laughs> it's it's a silent protest. Yeah. Yeah. Mark and I has one of the craziest GoPro clips ever. <laughs> oh, okay. Getting inhaled just like that. Wave opens up and he falls directly on a dry reef. Oh, nobody yeah. nobody oh, likes that one. I want to see that. I'm like, oh my god. I know that. Yeah. Every surfer. I want to see yeah. that. That sounds insane. Yeah, when the lip lands at pipe, sometimes it like it'll say it was eight feet of water, it pierces the the, the, the water so bad it splits. And when you jump, it just sometimes like man, one out of twenty, it's dry yeah. reef. It's like full like, Moses and the Israelites. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I swear to God, it is dry <laughs> reef. Yeah. I, I broke my sticks. Yeah, last year I had a wave that wasn't even that big, did exactly what they said, but straight Moses parted the sea. <laughs> and, uh, I just face planted and knocked unconscious, got was plastic that when you surgery. Yeah. yeah, I got plastic surgery and then no surgery after that. And you I was wondering why you looked good. But, I need to hit the reset button on this video too. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, it was the craziest thing because the wave didn't look that big coming in and uh, I was in a bad spot and some of those waves you never know. Shit, <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> Brings us to my next friend, Mr. <laughs> Jamie O'Brien. Um, like we said, we've done a lot of trips together, Mexico, Tahiti, all across the board. Um, oh, Jamie. Awesome photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got his little Hey, Zach, how did you get that? <laughs> Tell us. Yeah, so this lens was actually the... Um, but um, so it's a lot of fun. We've had some great trips all over the world, um, laughs and amazing waves. So uh, Jamie does a series. Who is Job? Which is the number one Red Bull series like in the world. Um, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. You're gonna laugh. It is insane. Some of these pictures here we're gonna see. Um, and we'll get him to. Oh, we got his little quick video here that Damien put together. It's a surprise. It's fresh. 45 minutes long, but did not. Nah. <laughs> 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 so we're going to do Jamie literally lives in front of Pipeline. Oh my God. 
This is the land that you should have got a cat, but we are able to do it. published image was actually of Jamie in Transworld Surf Magazine and was you sitting on your board. And this was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so just another moment that he's always, I mean, Jamie just, he rides so many waves, he's got to come up with new, what, can you tell us what this is That's called? big wave rafting. Big wave rafting. <laughs> See, super I mean, safe. Well, you know, it's like you can't just be like, yo, I'm the best surfer in the world or best big wave surfer or whatever like we had to like come up with something to be kind of the best you know yeah. so we kind of took it like rafting to the next level yeah. we don't have rapids in Hawaii like, so like yeah. we're so the, you're totally yeah. awesome, right? so between me and Kaikea we're the best big wave rafters in the world <laughs> so it's his third you know? he's fourth you're like, but there's no third guy no, yeah exactly straight 20 footers on a raft it's just Jeez. the best time of your life how does that feel Feels great. All right. <laughs> Another one of Jamie. Oh, Always yeah. up to something. And well, this that, is. I had an idea. <laughs> you guys made this thing. You made the drop. Yeah. I have the pictures after, and he's he's pulled the drop on this one and made it to the bottom there. But I always up to something. These guys are scratching for their life and just want to catch a wave. And Jamie's trying to tag them here with poopies. <laughs> like, like, just trying to have fun. I, I feel like there's so much different ways right away, and I feel like surfing in, in general is a really greedy sport. So like, I found an outlet. Like you know, it's wonderful. Like, I'm not the first person to like go out there and have fun, but like to like. This you have to be greedy. You can share bonds. Uh, yeah. Here's another one. See? James, See? he's on a soft top board as well. So not only did he get into a wave on the soft top and out, but then he's just going to race car it the whole way. The best race car in the world too, right? There. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, it's always laughs. You never know what's going to happen with Jamie on the next wave. 
Um, and here's a board transfer, again on two soft tops. So you're on a longer board and then you're transferring to a shorter board? Is that what was, this was right before I believe? Well, the longer board you catch more waves, Mark really likes, and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I passed away and then I can transfer to a smaller board and then yeah, I just kind of trick the whole thing, thing, you know? It's like a magic trick, a back door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys love it. <laughs> I have lots of friends. This was actually shot about a week ago of Jamie, um, and he's again on a soft top, um, the catch surfs, and I really love this moment. The sun was just about to peak out. This was with the 16 to 35 millimeter, I believe about a week ago. Yeah. So that was just some late season fun there. And guys, are, yeah. Here's one of Jamie. This was, I was actually like sitting on the, the beach about to go in, and I see these lights flash by me going out, and of course Jamie going out with his board, and, He's right, there's another 45 minutes to 50 minutes that you have just a little bit of light and makes for an amazing wave. I'm sure it must be wild in there. I think I've seen some of your footage. Uh, usually you got a GoPro with you at all times, so you can always find that footage that Jamie's got. This might even be right from your house, Jamie, or around there. I don't know the exact area, but Jamie again out there right at Pipeline in the barrel there, kind of giving you that perspective and that lineup shot of being there. This one is... One of our first ones at Tahiti, and this was really close. Um, almost <laughs> ran me over. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> some more of Jamie, and this one, I really love this one in the moment, that golden hour. You know, you can just tell by that style. And as you can see, he's backside here, he's regular foot, but he's standing up in that. That is a very difficult thing. I mean, as you boys are all doing to it, it wasn't very. Um, popular many people were doing it even like four or five years ago I'd say you know what I mean like and it's like but how wild it is to be backside standing up like that that is expert difficulty level for sure you know it's a great moment another one sometimes you can't always stand up there right it's a grab and go at full speed ahead in those moments um, GoPro in the mouth there again. You can see all his clips throughout his shows and different things. And uh, he's got his clips always going. So and then Noel was mad. He's like, well, I gotta pick that GoPro. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the GoPro. He's like, they're not gonna run in the magazine anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> Take care of it. What magazine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here he is sitting. Parallel, parallel. Yeah. Ready to up, go. Always something different with Jamie. So. Next, we got Mr. Nathan hey, Florence. Hey, yeah, hey. So, all smiles and all nades. So, you grew up, I mean, how old are you, Nate? Uh, 22 now. 22 now. Okay, so you grew up on the North Shore, and um, anything you want to tell the fine folks about yourself? Just, uh, I grew up on the North Shore, Why? with Eli, a little older than my generation, but we all kind of start, start serving pipe at the same time, and uh, looking up to these two guys with all the free surf stuff. Especially kind of Jamie because he kind of led the way with making his own movies and stuff. Yeah. We always thought that was really cool trying to make our own heads. And uh, now I'm trying to, just, trying to edge him out of there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's all. I, w I wish we put that Tahiti wave that you had in here. That thing was insane. I don't know if you guys have seen that one of Nate dropping in at Chopo. It's just nice. one of the most insane big waves paddled in and he makes the drop. I mean, what that was a. A, That's a, a way lot, of, a lot of luck involved with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of something where everything came together and turned out really the balls. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah to go. I called Nate into that and then he did a big interview and just completely left me out. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was telling everyone, I called Nate into that and I see the bag. I was like, oh, here it is. Read this huge article. They say like, what they want. Everyone was like, they admitted it. I mean, that's, even my best friends were saying not to go. You guys well, Nate. You grew up right there on the beach, right at Aoki, yeah. like literally right there. I've known him for probably 19 years. Mm -hmm. But he was crying and stuff still. Like, oh, we yeah. Two years ago, right? We'll yeah. 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 Two years ago. Torturing us every day. <laughs> and what age did you start surfing pipeline by growing up there? Um, I feel like I kind of didn't really get into it until a little later, maybe 14, 15. Uh, our, our crew kind of started getting real interested to get some waves out there. I mean, it, it literally seemed like, while I've been shooting, you guys suddenly just, all of you guys decided like, we're doing it this winter, and they were just all out there then. No, they just know? served <laughs> together yeah. at all times. Yeah. 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 It's, like, it's like John, Nathan, Eli, Koa, and Cheers. like, 
cure on. And they show up in a five pack every time. Yeah. Damn it. I'm like, I'm like, yo, Kalani, we gotta start surfing together too. Uh, yeah. and they added like a very like walking dead strategy to yeah. it, like when they have to go get supplies from towns and they go. Yeah. That's how they would surf all the time. Safety. You know? uh, oh uh, here's a quick little video uh, made by Nate's filmer here. There's some waves at Pipe, I believe, this past winter, Nate, yeah? If there's any moments or any little things you want to add to it, that is right there expert. You saw how he kind of took his hand off that rail there and kind of stood up there. He was not going to be slouch or crouch in that moment. You know, these are... That's just one of those things you, you grew up seeing Jamie and, and the boys do, letting go of their rail. Free. It's such a hard thing to do. It's not, it wasn't everything, yeah. It was Jamie and Bruce them right yeah. before. And very few guys, though, I remember always like letting go on that moment, you know? I was sitting on the beach on like probably all five of these waves. And I was like, oh, sh okay, it's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get away wave much, Jamie. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can't, like that section, though, right? It's like all speed, yeah, and yeah, grab and go. That's and Pipe, it's just one of the most unpredictable waves in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. that, was just I feel like, that was last week? So that was last week out at Pipeline by Nate. And can you imagine his collection of waves from this past winter or even longer? That was just a little taste of that. Um, so I always love this photo of Nate. I believe it's kind of back door off the wall, kind of ace, little yeah. zone, very shallow water. And it might be a closeout. Possible you know, what I mean? <laughs> he, he's gonna hold. And you know, part of this, of being a professional surfer as a photo surfer or like that free surfer, you're paid to be looking calm in those situations. If you had this face of fear every time in the barrel, the magazine wouldn't want to be running that. If you, I joke with these guys all the time. I was sick, but your eyes were closed. And Eli's like, boy, like, no, my eyes were closed. I saw you. Like, I know. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. there's some, some guys are like this. Like, yeah. And there's a lot of, like, Shane Doran. You watch a, a GoPro club of him, and he's like. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. That, goes, that goes back to the relationship between the surfer and the photographer. Like, Noel tells me sometimes, like, that didn't look good. Like, let go of your rail. And I'm like, oh, OK. Like, I'm going to try it. It's scary, but I'm going to try it. Yeah, we'll try and it. like, the next wave. We nail a shot and I'm like, thank you. Like, yeah. Just a little, exactly. little like. It's really working together because think of that playing field too. I gotta be in that sweet spot for this. If I'm too far out here, this is my lens pulling below the water. Could have missed the whole shot and that could have been the moment. And it's really him trusting me. He's, they're not even gonna look at me. They know I'm there to do my job. I'm not even, you know, and I know that they're not gonna hit me. That's their job. And they're gonna get the wave and they're gonna be calm, composed and in that moment. So it's a you know mutual um, relationship on that of that's the heavier thing too with with, with uh, the surfer photographer bond developing it's just not only are we getting work is a lot of times you popping up and looking over and the photographer pops up next to you yeah she just gets over yeah, 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 yeah we have a good laugh and they get popped yeah. by the next one yeah, right. so yeah it's uh we're right there in that moment as well with them um, it's that pipeline just one of those picture perfect blue days. Might have been the shootout, I'm not sure. Um, Nate, going for a dive. Yeah. That is not a good place, you can't see his board there. Like, he's pretty <laughs> deep there. I've seen a lobster over here. <laughs> might, yeah, hit, <laughs> might hit the reef on that one. Um, another one, Nate's just been known for going, you want the steep and deep before, and that's just really getting there and going as deep and steep as possible. And you know, you haven't even been out there that long, but knowing that reef so well is what's really setting up the way. The lineup is that like, a lot of times it's like, guys from second reef or just outside don't end up getting it. Some of the ways dial up and hit way inside, some break outside. Like I said, it's so unpredictable. Yeah. So sometimes you just have getting to Getting lucky it. too. Yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes you can sit all the way inside and you're like, no, I'm going to sit all the way inside for these insiders. And those like cleanup sets yeah. come. It's, <laughs> no. it's, a payoff. it's like, which one do you want to do? Get pounded to the beach? So, um, Mr. Eli Olsen. Uh, Eli. 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 Tell us a little bit about yourself, Eli. Uh, I like to surf. <laughs> All right. All right. This is. That was back in. Uh, this can do it. That was can do it. Huh? Yeah. There's a few waves of Eli. This is a uh, beautiful pipeline. Nate actually put me into this. Thanks for the credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These guys were doing uh, secret All stuff. All kinds of it. That's cool. You give credit to your friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
this is this is at Kandui. Look how below sea level this wave goes, and we'll see the water angle of this. I believe it's the same one right after. Yeah, this was one of the best trips of my life. Now we're seeing most insane waves. Here I am trying to get a shot of him. That's my own white helmet right there. This that was an insane swell. I have a photo of you in there though that we'll talk about. I think that's a swell of a lifetime. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a big wave, Eli. This is uh, Jaws. I don't know if you uh, made this one, but it was a big uh, one. That lift landed on my back. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I got in a car crash. Uh, uh, for a while after that. A few days, for sure. Damn. So here's Eli. This is actually at that Dewey wave. We went on a trip and it was a very last minute trip and we ended up getting like probably the best waves I've ever seen in my life. Hey, Kandui, where is Kandui? Kandui is in Mentawais in Indonesia and it is a mission to get there but it was so worth it. It was so hot though, no clouds, like no wind for like four days and pumping waves to the point where we were like sitting in what little shade we could find on the boats that we were out in and like just trying to hide from the sun. Like it was oh, yeah. insane. We had, I think we all had a heat stroke that first day. I, was, I don't think I've ever been more sunburned in my life. Yeah, like, that was, the cool thing about that trip is back again to the photographer-surfer relationship. Noel was on it and reaching out to us saying, what do you think? And we're feeding off each other. And I was kind of the last one to jump on that trip. You, Billy, Co. were super on it. I was like, oh, that sounds really sick. I don't know. And then you, you told me it's going to be good. And I was like, okay, no, I'm it's going to be good. I know if I pull in and he's on the spot, we're going to get something done. And we ended up nailing one of the best shots I've ever got. So. Yeah, this was actually an O'Neill ad all over the place. And Windows, store Windows for Eli's sponsor was awesome. So it's a really cool thing um, to be able to see like that. I mean, especially with like a friend. At least Eli got the call, all right? This guy's got a lot of sneaky tricks. <laughs> Oh, the truth. <laughs> this back door, um, beautiful wave, even when it's overcast like that, and that's a that's a very scary wave, wouldn't you say? I mean, I I'm more scared to shoot there, like than off the wall. Like when off the wall is big and closing out, like back door terrifies me. Yeah, we give you guys major props when you sit that back door. Like, <laughs> terrifying. It's terrifying like, to all surf. So shallow. But then like, yeah, like if a big set comes that whole section is shutting down. Yeah. I think everyone has put in a lot of time. It feels like Ace is probably the most dangerous spot. I know I've gotten my worst comments there. Yeah. There'll be two photographers at back door and there'll be like 30 at pipe. Yeah, yeah exactly. You get a little channel there so you can kind of sit in the channel at pipeline. Not fully safe, but safer. As opposed to like back door, it's like straight dry reef on the inside. Okay. Like you can't go straight in, you gotta swim around to go in. Like when you pull in the barrel at back door, it gets shallower and shallower and shallower. The longer you're in the barrel, it just gets shallower. So it's like the longer you make it, and then <laughs> if you're gonna have a wipeout like way down the line, it's gonna get worse for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like just the way your body is oriented as a photographer, you never, you don't, you don't get sucked over it as often, but when you do, you get sucked over in a bad way. Because yeah. you're fighting it, so you're going overhead first every time. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas surfing, you can jump forward, and you can be like, oh, okay, I'm going feet first, and I'm going to scratch my way like a cat to be feet first again. I had a pretty bad one. Just, whoop. I had a pretty bad one this past winter, like late, and we were at off the wall, and there's like crazy backwash coming to it, but it's really like six, eight feet and like good. And the wave came and it literally landed right in front of me with the backwash. So the backwash like shot it up and it came down so hard, I don't remember anything like when it did. And I all of a sudden like hit the reef with my hand, cut up my hand, and I was like, okay, push off the reef, like, because I know it's below me. So I put my feet on it, pushed up, and I came up and I was like kind of seeing black. And the jet ski lifeguard was kind of coming over as water patrol. I think it was during like backdoor shootout maybe or something. And the guys are like, you're under for two waves. And I don't remember. I think when I like kind of hit that, but that way that popped up and landed on me was like a wall hit me. It was like insane. I mean, another scary thing about off the wall, Mark was there and we were out there shooting and it was insane off the wall. This must have been four years ago. And we got great photos and all of a sudden one landed on me, ripped my camera out of my hand and broke my leash on my camera. Do you remember that? I'm like, yeah. find it. And it wasn't to find the camera. It no, was it was like, more like, find it. We want, we want. <laughs> Go 
find the photos that we had got. We got such great moments in the photos, we were like freaked out like to find the photos. And we ended up finding it right before it hit the beach, put on a new leash and went back out. Like those are still some of my favorite moments. Like yeah. thanks Mark. <laughs> Anyone at any line? A little window there. As the wave, like the lens is being pulled below the surface there. Um, another big one of Eli, you see the jet ski in the back, kind of a guy filming on the back there. Um, this was Ken Dewey. Is that you, Eli? Yeah. Good. <laughs> you see how beautiful and blue those waves were? It's just insane. Um, pipeline there. I'm blowing up. So I believe that was the last of those ones. I don't know if the boys have any other remarks or we could take some Questions? Um, moments, yeah. Does, does anyone have any questions? Uh, Jamie. Jamie. Uh, how do you deal with the fear factor? Do you have a no limit or? No limit. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, well, it all depends like where, where you are, you know? It's like, I, I think the hardest thing is is every summer you sit there and you're like, whoa, that was a pretty heavy winter, you know? You kind of like reminisce on the, that winter, you know? And then you look forward on another winter. So I think things, I don't know, like, I just, you just gotta deal with it, man. Like, like, it's like, I think for the for the worst for me, it was like big pipe swells. Like I'm, I'm kind of nervous, but I know I, I got the skill and I, I got, got what it takes to do what I need to do. But like, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know, just like, you just kind of black out. Right? Once, you, once you get out there, it's just, it's on. Like there's no, like, I mean, I've never worked a day in my life, but when I pop out the pipeline, it is on, dude. Like I just, you just start going and you just, you, you make your luck, you know? And, and sometimes like Mark says, you wipe out, but you're, you're trying to learn how to control your fall and like, and understand what's going on underwater, whether you're getting rolled around the reef and whether you know when it's a moment you can't control, I think those are the scariest moments when you take a wipe out and you don't expect it and it just spins you. And sometimes, sometimes we're underwater like this. Like, <laughs> you know, we're, we're like fighting for our life, you know? Like we know shit's about to hit the fan and like, and you're getting tossed and tumbled and you know, like you don't know which way is up and down, you know, wait everything like settle down and I think moments like that, like pretty crucial. Like some winners will be a pipe winner, some winners will be a wine man and jaws winner, like some winners will be like a perfect close up KEQ winner. Like I don't know, like we're like it's just but then you get this like drive and this adrenaline and that's what keeps you going and keeps you wanting more, I guess, really. Thank you. <laughs> that's great. Yes, Sean. How, how often are you guys like paddling for a wave and think like, ah, nah, it's not making well, whatever, but then you see Zach in the zone, so you convince yourself to go? <laughs> almost, almost, almost every time. time. Yeah. Go! <laughs> go! 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 It happens. I quit I that shit a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. Mark looks at me, glares, and like turns back around. Mark's not big. I used to do that forever without health insurance, and now all that, all those things are like, guys. Oh yeah, the hip's been like that for about 15, 15 years now. Like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I, I think one of the cooler things about surfing pipe for as long as we've been surfing at Mark and I is like, I feel that like I'm grateful to made that many years at pipe and you know not and successfully done it every year. You know, it's like. I get it why Jerry Lopez moved to Oregon and started snowboarding. Cause like, <laughs> dude, this is freaking gnarly surfing pipe. You remember when winter. you broke your leg? How long it took you to get back in the headspace yep. for us? Oh. I broke my leg twice at Pipeline. I've Jeez. hit my head multiple times on the reef. Like, I mean, I've almost drowned other multiple times. And like, but then you all have like winners. You go five winners. You're just cruising. You're just gonna yeah. spit out of barrels. Life's good. And then you know, so it's like, just kind of like, take it as it comes. But you, what you learn and what, what put it in your time at Pipeline is, is yeah. you end up getting a lot better at waves. Yeah. And that kind of just boils down to it's insane. Do you guys think it's a huge mental thing? Like say you have a bad winter, bad injuries, you're, you feel like no matter what, your confidence isn't there. And then you have those other sessions where you make the steepest drops ever and craziest waves where you're writing yourself off, but you somehow make it. And then your confidence just skyrockets. Yeah. And then you feel like, like you're not even human, you're like, oh, look at these waves, but like, oh, I got this, like, no problem. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, the head game is a huge aspect back to, like, especially the fear coming factor. off of an injury. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you balance Get that rhythm going. That was one yeah. thing when I got plastic surgery and got knocked unconscious. I was telling myself, 
I was terrified, but I was like, I'm getting back in there and pushing it really hard as soon as I could. So 16 days after surgery, there's a six to eight foot salt at pipe. And I was like, I gotta go or I'm gonna be really scared. So like, I personally try and push myself yeah. as quick as I can. Because if you let it get faster, it exactly. just gets so It'll just grow, oh, oh, oh. It'll grow on you and just yeah. get worse. No. Any other questions? There's a question for you on the live feed. Oh, uh, they wanted to know, do you remember your first published photo in a bodyboard magazine? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, 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 it was, a, it it was, was a Mark, Mark Healy. Healy. <laughs> and, um, it, was it was for his sponsor. Exactly. It was for his sponsor. <laughs> Julia's ad. <laughs> I, I, I do not remember. I believe it would be like a bodyboard magazine. And that was a long time ago. I think it was a Mike Stewart photo. I mean, these guys can all agree, like Mike Stewart, is probably one of the best wave riders. That guy can ride like anything and it's insane. And like, I see him go out, like walk down to the beach and he's, I'm like, okay, it's gonna get good. <laughs> if I see Mark, like, yeah. like Mike Stewart walking down, I'm like, it's gonna start turning you know, this one? Oh yeah, that, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, um, yeah, I'd probably say Mike Stewart. <laughs> he's a legend. Any other questions? Yes. Um, I guess to Mark Healy already, the big wave riders. Um, kind of this last winter, or prior winter when El Nino season, I know it from like smaller waves to like four foot, almost six foot, but then going into like the 15, almost 20 foot range. Um, I found it rather exciting. So I mean, any advice that like, or training that I could possibly do to kind of like, you know, I mean, I have a best and everything too, but um, not cool ones like you guys have in play most, but um, I guess a training that goes into that kind of stuff, the mental head space, because I enjoy getting pounded too, but you know, but I mean, I just, I guess training wise, I, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm kind of going in that direction. I may not be like pro surfers like you guys, but I enjoy, I guess, surfing bigger waves now and then. I, I think these guys have all seen a switch in the past few years of how you want to do your training. I mean, I'll let them answer right after, but I've just seen the surfers, you know, it's not just hang on the beach and they're just drinking or doing things. They, they, this is like their jobs they've all realized and how they've become their athletes. Um, you know, they can't, they want to like create their career to like make it longer and like last. Um, I know Nate is the strongest guy on the North Shore and works out yeah. three times a day. So we'll let Nate start and see kind of like how his training. I mean, I think there's not there's not really much that, there's a little transition for strength and stuff. The best thing for surfing is surfing. If you want to get better at barrel, barrel riding, you ride barrels more. If you want to get better at big wave riding, maybe just start slow and build your way up. But the best thing to do is just practice uh, specifically for it. I mean, you can do all kinds of balance training, strength training, but I, I mainly do that just for fun on the side. The real thing that's going to get you better is just surfing, I think. Yeah, I, I think, uh, like, there's some winters where I'll just train for, like, three, four months, you know? But to me, that's a lot. Maybe not Nate, but, you know, like, I'll, I'll, come, I'll be, like, cruising, drinking beer or whatever, McDonald's all summer, and then, like, then I'll be all, fuck, there's, there's Fat O'Brien right there, you know? And then about a month, month later, they're like, oh, what? Six Dude, yeah, I'm just, I'm like, you know, ripped out, you know, no fishing, you know. But, but then, like, you know, like, there's some winners that I'm just, I'm totally not ready, and they're like, oh, the, and here comes the swell, and I'm like, I'm looking at the, the forecast, and I'm like, it's not like I'm just going to start training now, like, I'm, I'm like, you know, now I'm shit creek now, like, here comes, here comes this, like, purple blob across the North Pacific, and like, you know, I just kind of like, shit, I'm just... There's hope. There's hope, baby. <laughs> Start eating healthy that week. <laughs> it, it's, it's real mental, you know. It's like it's it's like it's that experience, like Nate said. You know what I mean? I feel like even if you're slightly out of shape, you know how to dive under that wave. You know where to paddle out. How to paddle out? How to take that wipe out? The training and exercise and all that is that extra edge to help you. You know what I mean? But mentally, you know, you've been in those situations. So it's yeah. that practice like he said and just that's one more thing I'll pass to the mark I, I just I 
time and time again, I'm like, oh my God, this wave's gonna land on my head right now. And I literally, like, here's the surface of the water, and I just go, relax, relax, relax. Wow! Like, yeah. it just, you know, it just goes, you know? And then you just, just waiting for it. Yeah, you gotta be like, you know, you're just diving deeper. It's gonna no. take you there anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're hopefully you get like a, a bounce up, you know? And you're like, you're like, just best. relax, relax. And you're like in the worst position. Just relax. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark knows more. <laughs> He's not fish. I'll, I'll do honest, honesty hour with you here. Um, so I, I think a lot of it, so it, it's, just, it's the same thing with this like big wave survival or, or free diving. The, the bulk of the fast, uh, fast work you can do is psychological because you know people don't talk about it, but I think we all know some people who have been pretty much smoking crack before surfing big waves for a long time, <laughs> like literally. So they still are able to like pull their act together and get, because they have this like crazy false sense of confidence. Like confidence will get you really far, but it, once you start button up against a wall of like, of uh, being tested, especially the way big wave surfing is going now. So like, at first, and I run people through exercises with breath holding. So I guarantee you, we can go through a, just a little exercise. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna wait till you feel really uncomfortable. And you're like, shit, that's my threshold. That's not. That's your psychological threshold. Those are false alarms telling your brain that you need to breathe, and it's actually pressure alarms, not low oxygen. So you know, run you through some breathing exercises. Do it again. Do the breathing. Do it again. Do it again, and you'll see that you can reset those um, impulses, those nerve impulses, going to your brain. The main thing is you want your brain telling your body what to do, not your body telling your brain what to do. You don't want something, some muscle this big that that's in your chest telling your brain like we're gonna die. Like you need to keep the. I always say you need to keep the control in the wheelhouse. If you're in a giant storm in a big ship, do you want the guy that's down wrenching on the engine calling the shots of how to steer? No, he doesn't see what's going on. So it's 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 mental stuff, and then once you hit that mental wall, that's when you start chipping away at the physical stuff, I feel like. And I, but you have to have, it doesn't matter what anybody says, like, and, and I can tell people things, and they can be like, yeah, I know, but you have to believe it. like. And at a certain point, if you're in a really terrible situation, even if it's utterly unrealistic, it doesn't hurt to have a like dumb and dumber. So you're saying there's a chance. Like, <laughs> yeah, so hold on to that. Like, I got this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yep. So along those lines, like, I want to know if you guys have any tips for surfers who are trying to push their level. And you're trying to get to bigger and bigger waves, and then that closeout set's gonna come and explode right in front of you. Like, what is your mindset? Are you just like trying to throw your board away and get down as deep as you can, or relax, or like, do you have any tips on that kind of stuff? Relax, relax, relax. Yeah. relax. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, like, what, what is it? 80% of your oxygen comes from your legs, you know? So if you're just kicking down deep, like, I gotta get out of here, you know? And like, you're freaking out, using your arms, you're just burning, you're burning energy, you're burning oxygen, you're like, you're, you're wasting your time, you know? So we're like, most of the time, I, I don't, I swim no more deeper than that. I, I assess it too, if I see like, you're not, if you can get to the channel or something and a set's coming, then go to the channel. If I see, you're in that spot, it's gonna land no matter if you go in or out. I wait for it to come to me a lot of times and conserve that energy. Because you're only gonna use energy trying to go in or out and you're still gonna get just as pounded, if not more, and be using that energy. So it's really like assessing that situation. It's a close up, it's on my head. I'm just gonna wait right here for it and I'm gonna like slowly breathe and calm myself in that situation. So we have time for one more question, is that okay? Yes. Uh, could I ask Eli how much? Uh, could I ask how much you get from O'Neill? Not enough. Not enough. Thank you very much again to the water. Uh, Chris Small.